so this has been a really different Disney trip. It's been kind of weird. There's a lot of things to get used to with like the new way that things work. So we're gonna just kind of tell you like what our thoughts were traveling to Disney during a pandemic. There was stuff that I liked and there was also stuff that I didn't really love. It kind of seemed like they were doing some things really well and then some stuff was kind of counterproductive. Obviously though, we extended our stay by a day, so it's not like we hated it. We didn't have a bad time. It was just sometimes we were like, are we really doing things this way? Okay. Well, and it wasn't even because like, it made things easier for cast members because I can understand that. Sure. It, it made it worse for them. It made, like, there's nothing that I could see. Like, some, most of the worst functions that they're doing right now, the way that they're doing it, whoever did the planning for that failed their employees because the things are absolutely harder to do. Well, I feel like that's true with the capacity that they're at now, but when they were at like 10% capacity, maybe whenever they first opened, like whenever it was really, I don't know the exact number, but whenever it was a lower capacity than what it is now, I feel like what they were doing would work, but it definitely does not work for 25% capacity. I feel like table service dining is actually way better now. You're not sitting on top of other people and the other thing is because they're not making as much of the food it like I felt like the food was better like it actually tasted like it was prepared like right then just for us the other thing was like for character dining I don't know if you guys noticed or not whenever I'm pretty sure by the time this airs I will have shared videos from us at the Garden Grill. The characters came around and interacted with us like four times, I think, which, but we were still able to like eat. It was a very smooth experience. I hope that they keep doing things like this. Like I don't want this to change, like keep the restaurants at a lower capacity. Um, it's just, it's better food. It's like you feel more comfortable the whole experience like that you don't feel rushed by any of the waiters because sometimes that does happen like we have been practically shooed out of some restaurants like while we were eating and that's you know that's just the nature of it whenever Disney overbooks stuff and when there's reservations on top of reservations on top of reservations and stuff but every dining experience that we had that was a sit-down meal was awesome. Loved it. Things that were a little bit difficult was finding food otherwise because they actually have still a lot of quick service restaurants and snack stands closed. So they're having you mobile order which is great for like less contact and like encouraging distancing. It's not great when you're at 25% capacity and people are all funneled to the same like two restaurants. Everybody in the park who wanted a full lunch was congregating around those two places waiting for the screen on their phone to turn purple so that they could go in and get their order. So it just, it created like, just there was like, you know, choked up areas where there was tons of people standing around unable to social distance because you have to go and you have to say that you're here so people are going there waiting in front of the restaurant when if they just opened up all the quick service restaurants it would spread out the people to all of those places like still keep the mobile ordering thing but and there were restaurants that actually before this had the capacity to do mobile orders from that were closed now that's difficult for those cast members who have to work those areas because they're having to stay on top of a lot more. The snack carts, if you think that, if you're seeing that it might be a while before you can get like your full meal, definitely like make sure you have snack. Oh, that brings me to another problem with mobile ordering. I like, so in the past we've mobile ordered some. I don't love doing it because there are certain problems 
that Disney has with mobile ordering when other people are able to walk up to the counter and order. And mainly what's happened to us is they, our order has been completely overlooked and we've had to wait longer than if we would have just gotten in line, like way longer because our order isn't a priority. With everybody mobile ordering, that doesn't happen anymore, so that's great. But one downside is that there are only certain things that they'll allow you to make substitutions to. So like, at some places you can say no cheese, but at other places it might not be set up for you to say no cheese. So that means you're kind of stuck with whatever. So if you have an allergy or something, that's your, that was a problem that we had. It, it was difficult to navigate around that. And I would just say, if you're gonna eat there and you need to have a meal, definitely like plan ahead. When you're not hungry, if you say, well, I only had breakfast an hour ago, like go ahead and sit down and plan your lunch. Look at all the mobile order menus and see where you can go and what you can get. Just plan ahead, like plan before you're hungry. Table service dining has improved tremendously. But also, like, don't plan on being able to get the thing that you like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because all of the menus are drastically reduced, too. I don't know if you said that already. But, like, no, but that is true. The menus are reduced and they're changed. I did notice, like, for me, the disposable masks work better and they just, they breathe a lot better. Like, I feel like every time I inhale in one of the cloth masks, it like gets sucked into my face. It wasn't bad wearing them pretty much all day. The mask thing, it wasn't that bad and because we had like decent mild weather so it didn't like, my face didn't get sweaty or anything. It wasn't that bad. You can pull over and stop. Like there's lots of places. It was more than what I thought just to like take a quick, quick drink like out of the way. So that like wasn't, I don't know. I didn't think that it was that bad. Facial hair increases the face sweat. Yeah, that's true. If you have, I don't know what that's like. One thing I've noticed is people tend to, like there are some posts on social media and there are some like vloggers who are showing the parks dead. And then there are others who are like saying that the parks are packed. And the answer is yes. It's, it kind of depends on what park you're at, what section of the park you're at, but like some what places, yeah, what day of the week, weekends are definitely like really busy. They feel like they're at a much higher capacity than just 25%. And so that, that's going to definitely affect things. But like Epcot wasn't super crowded. It did not feel bad at all. Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom were a completely different story. There was so many people in the different lands and at the rides. And one of the things that they're doing, which is great, that I like, is they're social distancing people in lines. So you have to space out and they have markers everywhere. So this means that the lines back up much further and go out into common areas. But they're not any longer than... They're not longer lines than normal but they're longer lines than normal so like they're just like they the longer. wait time isn't any longer than what it would be if the line was like bunched up together so like the line for frozen at epcot was down to like the quick service restaurant in china but it was still it's like the same amount of though. it's the same amount of wait but the problem with that, so the great, the positive thing about spacing out in line is that you're not right up on people. The last time we were here in January, a woman actually let her child, she stood close enough and was holding her child who was melting down and let him kick me. That was, that was a whole, that was a whole crazy thing when this kid was kicking me. And then, yeah, we got accused of some things, which was just like, it was uh, nuts. Uh, because of the, like, social distancing markers, you're much less likely to have 
issues with like little arguments with people or just with people accidentally like knocking into you and stuff because that stuff definitely happens just on accident. The bad thing that like one downside to that is probably one of my biggest issues overall. So that backs up into other areas. Which means that people who are walking through those lands have less room to walk in distance. Like for Slash Mountain, they had that whole entire bridge blocked off. You oh walk yeah. That yeah. was the big that's the biggest one they had. The widest bridge that leads over and they to it Splash off to Mountain put was a blocked off. For them to go through a queue. So instead of having it go down that right. one wooden bridge that only goes on the water. They blocked off the largest bridge that had that's the widest amount of space. Whenever you're walking around in Fantasyland or in Hollywood Studios it's impossible to social distance and so oh, you're yeah. doing all these things you're social distancing in restaurants and, and kind line. of in lines but then it you're works. walking right up on people and if somebody in front of you like coughs or somebody walking by you coughs or sneezes good luck to you sometimes they'll limit capacity on how many people can go into a store which is great especially in the smaller store. We had to wait in line to get into the confectionery and that was actually very confusing. I didn't mind waiting in line and it moved fast. They were trying to... Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you skip? Yeah. Uh, so, sometimes I have a... I have, I have a little bit of a stutter and sometimes I edit it out. But just so you know, that's a good, like, this is real life. You could, <laughs> you could bend like one of those 50s singing groups. You know, they're like, do, 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 Anyway. It's, I just, like, we choose to laugh about it because it happens. Yours is much less subtle, or no, much, <laughs> much less subtle. You can't say the right thing. I can't. This, this is life with a brain injury, okay? I don't know what I'm saying. You say okay. the back, the opposite. I do, I say things backwards. Your, yours is much more subtle you have than mine. dyslexia. I do, well, that's a thing. That's actually like a thing sometimes, like you, because it affects like verbal, not just reading. I just have slow speech sometimes. But you do talk slower. I don't talk at my like prior normal speech path, uh, speech speed. Yeah. Because I've had to learn how to think about what I'm going to say before I say it. No, but that, well, and that's a thing that I was taught in speech therapy after the accident was to, like, try to slow down, but my brain and my mouth go at different speeds, so, like, it's it's hard to do that, and I just want to, like, blah, 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 like, talk really fast and stuff. Yeah, but there are certain tricks, like, to help with, with to help with having a stutter and different speech issues like that. And one is to like slow down, take a breath, and start with, say a word that starts with a softer sound, like, hello. But I don't, I don't go slow enough. He, he talks slower to compensate for that, but I'm just like, whatever, I'm gonna stutter and it's just gonna come out like loud and proud. It's annoying. Sometimes. So anyway, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, oh, you, 
don't don't think he's being mean. We both just have chosen to laugh at our issues. One of the issues that we had was sometimes whoever was like directing people to where they needed to go and to like certain lines and stuff just wouldn't listen that no, that's not what we're here for. I'm just trying to do this one thing. So last night when we were at the confectionery before we left, they kept telling, one cast member kept trying to tell me everybody has to get in this line and everybody has to get in this way, this way. And I'm like, I'm like I'm starting to walk to the line and then I asked another cast member because I was like, do I have to, like I literally just need to like grab this thing right here off the shelf. I'm not ordering anything from the bakery case, but because they're kind of doing things in an assembly line way, it, and I don't, I mean, I don't blame the cast member who was trying to like, you know, herd everybody because that's like a difficult job and stuff. The woman, I think, told me that everybody had to get in line. Everybody, you have to go here to this line. Everybody. And like, and I was like, but what about that? I'm trying to get the, and she was like, and I only had time to like point in the general direction. So she just assumed she knew what I was getting and that it was something that you had to get in the line for the bake case for. And I was See, like, that guy I did the same thing. trying to tell, no, that's not like, and then I was like, so I have to get in line to go get a, and she was like, she was like, yes, everybody has to. And well, the way that they were saying it made it sound like you have to shop in the line. Basically, like, yes. The line yes, going to go yes, past yes. everything. That's what it. And you pick up what you walk, what you want when you walk past it. Right. Yeah. But you cannot walk around, which that's not the case. But the way they were saying right. it made it sound like everybody in the store is Has shopping in the line. From this line, yeah. Well, I hope that more people will kind of like slow down and ask like hey wait a minute can I this is not what I'm going for can I please get this thing like do I need to you know just it, it some of this stuff can be very confusing so keep your eyes open there are signs everywhere but sometimes you'll be like that's, that's not what I'm here for that's not that doesn't apply we found a lot of cast members who were really really great about this stuff like we had an issue where I wanted to mobile order something from Pecos Bills to get uh, one of the Haunted Mansion ghost things. I'll put a picture of it because I don't, it's packed. <laughs> but it comes with ricotta dropped donut holes, <laughs> which just seems disgusting. And you can't substitute I on the app. Recipes. It's I nasty. did too. I did too. It looks super gross. Oh, I saw them in person. They look gross. Oh. Um, but they have mini churros there. So I really wanted to see if it was possible. And I knew they might tell me no, and that was totally fine. I was willing to accept that. But I wanted to see if I could get the Haunted Mansion thing with the churros instead of the donut holes. And I explained to the cast member, I was like, I really want to see if I can get a substitution for this. He just said, oh, you know what? Come on in. I was the only person in there and he just let me go in. I asked the um, cast member at the register and she let me do it. She let me pay for it right there. Don't be afraid to like ask nicely for something if you're not able to do it like on the app, if it's reasonable. But also you know? don't like throw a fit if it doesn't work out. Yeah, I mean, if they say no, they say no. Worst case scenario, they say no. I buy it with the donut holes. We don't eat the donut holes. Like that's... Look, it wasn't that big of a deal. They look like little, like, speckled meatballs. Like, I'm sorry. And you'll <laughs> see, like, people <laughs> people will say that, oh, cast members are really cranky or cast members are great. Guests are cranky. Guests are really great. And my answer to that also is yes. <laughs> You're going to see, like, a lot of different things. Like, anybody has the potential to be having a really good day. Anybody has the potential to be having a really bad day. I did see someone just kind of go off on a cast member and all the cast member was doing was trying to tell them the rules. Like they don't make the rules. That's somebody else who made those oh, rules. Wow. You know, we saw a lot of people just blatantly ignore cast members whenever they would tell them to put up their mask or ask them to like cover their nose because they do require that you cover your nose also. And 
I mean, it we've is. seen people straight up ignore them or just throw a fit about stuff. It's I mean, it's not a matter of your like view of whether or not masks are necessary or not. Yeah, it's, it's just about, it's the rule. It's, a, it's private property. Okay. Yeah. That's their rule. You have to do it. It's, or it's, don't go. Or don't go. It, and the really, so the really cool thing is this okay. cast member that we actually saw this whole thing go down with. I, so that was yesterday at Magic Kingdom. And I actually stopped and I went back and I gave her one of our cards that we made. And she said thank you. That she really appreciated that. And she was like, you know, a lot, like you guessed, you're really great. It's just once in a while, like we get people who don't want to listen. And she was like, I could have called security on those women and had them escorted out. Well, they say that over the thing. Right. If they you're say not that. Right, yeah. You're so going to be taken out of the park. She was like, I could have easily called security and had them come um, escort them off property since they were being so like belligerent about it. But she looked at me and she was like, but I don't want to do that. I don't even want to have them kicked out because they just truly want you to be there and they want you to have a good time. So I thought that that said a lot to her character. Like even though those women were really unnecessarily nasty to her, she was still like, I don't want them to have to leave. I want them to stay and have fun. The other thing that I've seen a lot is, oh, they're like being super strict about like, you know, enforcing Like I was kind of terrified. I thought that I had to find like a hidden secret place or like a like table to eat at anytime I needed a drink of water. That was just not the case. Like it wasn't that like strict and scary. And then there are also people who say like, oh, nobody's enforcing anything. And that's also another very mixed bag. We saw like half a dozen cast members, three of them Disney security. We watched as they watched a grown man walk out of the parks. Now, even it doesn't matter if you're out of the parks, if you're on Disney property and you're outside or inside somewhere, you have to be wearing a mask unless you're like in your hotel room. So he was in a place where he needed to wear a mask and he literally had his in his hand, would not put it on of and he was a grown man. Of the six cast members, and three of them being security, who watched him walk out of the park like that, not one of them said a word to him. He didn't even have a drink in his hand to be drinking while he was walking. There was even an Orange County Sheriff. Yes. Right there. Nobody said <laughs> a word to him. But on two occasions, on two occasions, I saw cast members kind of in a condescending way tell three-year-olds to put their masks on so it's 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 again it's a really mixed bag it kind of depends on whoever the people are who are watching like you're gonna find cast members who are stern about things you're gonna find cast members who are bubbly about things you're gonna find cast members who completely overlook like enforcing any of that stuff it's just you're gonna basically like ultimately whenever you go to Disney if you go anytime soon with the capacity as it is and with the rules as they are you're gonna find crowds you're gonna find dead areas you're gonna find it's like easy going and you're gonna find like people who are really strict about stuff you're gonna find some great dining experiences and some is gonna be kind of inconvenient. A lot of people are saying that the ride times are inflated. Some, like the wait times. Some Sometimes they are. Some of them were spot on. Some of them, yes, you will wait 90 minutes for that if you get in that line. But sometimes it will be half what the posted time is or it'll be 10 minutes less. So it's just, it is, I had forgotten about that until you mentioned rides without fast passes and now I think at 10% capacity or 15% they could go without fast passes but they definitely right need now. them now there's like right now the crowd levels are feel like what they normally are during the fall don't you think yeah because like we usually go when we usually go around this time like, 
I mean, it's just, it's a very like mixed experience. Some things were definitely much better than what I expected. And then there was the stuff that just felt kind of counterproductive that I hope Disney addresses soon. Um, now that they have, you know, increased to 25% capacity, it feels like it's more than that. But I think that could just be because they don't have everything open. So crowds aren't as spread out. Like there's a lot of stuff and open at Epcot. So that could be why it felt. Here's how they could honestly make, you know, we were talking about it's not 25% capacity across the whole park. Sure. That's where, that's the numbers that they're letting in. They're yes. letting on, on 25% of the full occupancy of the park. But because they don't have fast passes, because they're not utilizing in all of the restaurants and in all yeah. of the shops, it's forcing everybody in the park, that 25%, to pack in to certain, to certain areas. areas where it is at full capacity in those areas. Yeah, so, so like, the whole entire park may be at 25%, but where the where you are is not at 25% capacity. Yeah. So that's just that was really like that and the lack of quick service for dining. And I don't care. I'll I'll mobile order. Like they can keep that. They can keep the whole like you have to mobile order thing. The only thing that I hope that they do for that is that they make it so that you can easier like substitute things. But other than that though, like I'm totally cool with that. I just wish that they would open it up to more restaurants. That way people in the parks can spread out more. Bring back fast passes. People say that it slows the regular line down. It, it doesn't because here we are, the proof is in the wait times. Like there are things while we were there that had anywhere from 30 minute wait time, which isn't bad, but whenever you have disabilities, that's kind of rough. Um, that's like kind of a threshold for like, no, we really can't like, that's too much. But um, when you have wait times that are 30 minutes up to like 120 minutes. Slinky Dog Crash um, was 120 minutes the last day that we went to Hollywood Studios. And that was early in the day. Man. So that just, that's proof there's no fast passes for it. That's proof that fast passes are not what makes it the regular line slow. So I just, I would like to see them do that. We still, we had a good, great time. Yeah, it wasn't a I mean, I would. Bad like if we could go back down for like a few days in November or December, I would totally do it. There's just obviously things that you have to consider and you just really have to kind of manage your expectations. I think we ended up having a great time because we went with very low expectations. I think we actually rode more stuff than I thought we would be able to. Because we did notice something that was really helpful the parks around like the last hour that they're open, the wait times de decrease dramatically because since the parks close early for during the week, they kind of close at an awkward time. So I think some people were just being like, oh, we're get we don't have many dining options for dinner, so let's just go ahead and leave now. So wait times were definitely better in the evenings, I felt like, and it's also like a little bit cooler than so that's something to think about. I mean, security is a lot faster. That's one security thing. is faster, and I did like that because they're not putting their hands in your bag unless, like, it's for always, some reason. Gross in the first place. Yeah, it is gross because if you think about it, they put their hands in one person's bag and then they put their hands. They're not changing their gloves yeah. Yeah. and they're not sanitizing between people. So now, though, you just go through. Everybody has to go through a metal detector, and they will pick some people to randomly search and wand. My mom got picked and like the temperature screenings are really fast. I mean, I would go back soon. I would go back just to like maybe do some more, like I would go back for the Dole Whip nachos and also to do some shopping. If your kids just want to relax and stuff, definitely like hang out at the pool. I loved, I think we did four or five straight days at the pool with tag like at least like an hour in the pool 
and that helped him out so much. I just wanted to share like a rundown of what this we thought. Is how to monetize the life. What are you talking about? <laughs> it is not a monetized life. That is the truest statement of all. So anyway, that's just kind of what you can expect from Disney during the pandemic. Expect literally anything and whatever you read, it's all true. Even things that are opposites of each other, it's all true, <laughs> probably. It's just, you know, you gotta make it fun for yourself. Like we left like that surprise um, bucket of goodies for a family checking in. Like maybe that family won't really have any other magical moments like at Disney where like they're randomly surprised by a cast member by something but they have that like somebody a stranger left that for them and like we gave cards to the cast members you I wish we had brought more that. you can yeah like yeah. you can you can always do something for somebody else. you can make magic for yourself and for other people and I highly recommend doing that it just it was a great trip. This video is probably long and you just got to listen to us talk. We will see you guys later. Thanks for hanging out with us. We love you. Your life matters to us.